all right guys i'm back for another set so today i sound a bit sick here yeah? so you might have to forgive me if i sound a bit rough in some edges yeah <clears throat> but anyway we're gonna try and break down every single question from 11 as far as we can go now let's have a look so a solid metal sphere has a radius 1.5 centimeters the mass of the sphere is 109.6 grams work out the density okay straightforward yeah so unfortunately you're not given the density formula so i'd recommend you put this in your formula books right now which is density equals mass by volume okay um, the good thing here is that we have the mass which is 109.6 however we do not have the volume but it indicates to us that it's a sphere and we know spheres are basically a giant ball to, to summarize it and the sphere form is actually given in the beginning of the booklet and it looks something like this it's four over three uh, four thirds of um pi r cubed okay so this is the one we have to write down <clears throat> and here you just need the, the radius uh, which is 1.5 so just literally plug into the into your calculator so you've got four thirds pi bracket 1.5 close bracket cubed put this in and you should get about well exactly 4.5 pi i recommend you leave it like this in pi form just for now yeah and now in your calculator we can say therefore the density equals the mass which we know is at 109.6 by 4.5 pi okay i'm gonna go ahead and do this as well yeah just to make sure i did it right so 0.6 over 4.5 pi and we should get to three centimeter figures uh, about 7.75 uh what is it to, to do it, grams per centimeter cubed okay it's important to state the units here yep grams per centimeter cubed okay and that's really it that's really it <coughs> sorry now number 12 so it says here that we got um, a diagram that shows a hexagon a b c d e d e f and b c is parallel to e d okay so where's b c again so here's b c yep parallel to e d work out the size of the obtuse angle d e f obtuse literally means um the angle bigger than 90 like a obese angle that's how i memorize it as obese angle so d oh, i'm tired to say, d e f so this wide angle here okay if, it, if they told you to work out this bit here I, this would be known as the well technically it could be a right angle acute or even a reflex so i'm guessing this would be the obtuse angle the interior reflex yeah now that's how i go and try and work this out so what can we see here <clears throat> So we know we have um, a hexagon, so a six-sided shape. So you guys need to know one formula, yeah? It's called the sum of the interior angles. And the way this calculate is that you calculate the number size, which they tell us is a hexagon, so it's six. So it'd be n minus two, so six minus two times 180, okay? This tells you how much all the angles inside the shape adds up to. So what does it give us? What does it give us? So we've got four times 180, so 360, so 720 degrees. So we can assume that all these angles add up to 720. Now, another thing we can know. So we're trying to find this angle here, right? So let's call this one X. We should know this angle here since we're given everything. <clears throat> you need to realize that we have um, this kind of shape. If you've got two parallel sides, this means that the sum of these two so-called allied, allied angles should add up to 180. So A plus B equals 180. So angle at D plus angle at C must equal 180. So we've got 42 already, just subtract 42 from 180, and you should get about 138. So that means all of these interior angles here, 50 plus 96, 144, 42, and 138, and X, must sum up to 720. So let's go ahead and sum these up here. So I'm just going to just show it right, right down right here. Uh, you guys can go ahead and smash this in your calculators just to verify it plus x equals um, 720 now the quick way to do this is just collecting like terms yeah so 50 plus 96 plus 144 plus 42 plus 138 should give, should give us a 420 on the left side 470 i mean plus x equals 720 and 720 minus your answer and you should get 250 and that's it that should be it okay um <coughs> Okay, number 13. Felix has 10 cards. There are 5 reds, 4 blues, and 1 green card. Now, Felix takes at random one of the cards, and he does not replace the card. So this means one of the cards is removed. 
Felix then takes at random a second card. Complete property tree down below. Okay, so to summarize it's nice and easy. You start with 10 cards and when you pick that certain color, you have one less card left. So for instance, we have 5 out of 10 reds and we choose a red card. This means you now got 4 reds out of 9. And of course, you didn't choose <coughs> the others, so you must still have 4 blues. So 4 9 in the pack. You still must have 1 green, so 1 out of 9. So that's how you go. You just select the root and subtract 1, 1 and keep make everything the same. Now, and now let's do the next set. For blue, you had four blues, and we took another blue, so you must have now three blues out of nine. And as for the red and green, you still got five reds and one green. Lastly, for green now, if you took one green and there was only one left, that means you got no greens left, so it'd be zero out of nine, or just zero. Whereas the others, you still got five reds and four blues. So five out of nine and four out of nine. Nice and easy. Okay, now work out the probability that Felix takes at least one blue card and no green card. Okay, so these kind of ones can really make you stumble. So what this really means is that in your selection of cards, you must not firstly have any green at all. So this means that the green route is out. Okay, we're not going there. Now, secondly, to get at least one blue card, um, this means that we have to either have blue in the first set or blue in the second set. And of course, once again, green is out. So these values are all out. So we can't go there. So here's our combination, and for these questions, always write combinations, yeah? So you should find first the probability of getting either a blue card first, and then maybe, I don't know, a red, because that's still at least one blue and no green, or to get a blue in the first card and maybe another blue, because it says at least one blue, not only one blue. However, you could also get a red first and then a blue. Or, yeah, and that's it, that's all you can get, because you can't get red and red, and you can't get any green, so these are the three options you can have. So to get blue and red, this means you need to go through blue first and then get to red. So it'll be four tenths times five knives. So that's one that's that's one root. So let me let me put this down a bit, make it look neater. So this was red blue. So we said the first probability would be in four tenths and five knives. Okay. To get blue blue, this means four tenths and duh, 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 three knives. And lastly, red blue, this means you're going to go through five times the first chain, and then blue, which is four knives. So five times and four knives. So this looks similar to the first one. And that's it. Now all you do is literally resolve each one and then put the final property there. So nicely, they're all out of 90. So four times five is uh, 20 over 90. This one is 12 over 90. And the last one is 20 over 90. And then you must sum these up. Because remember, these are all different options you can take so 20 plus 12 plus 20 which is 52 over 90 and then just put that in a calculator and simplify it and you should get well it's not really worth simplifying you get 26 over 45 and this is i'm sure will be fine and, okay 14 now so this one i've already actually gone ahead and done only part a by the way there's actually a really super easy way to complete um, the table values for an equation um, in our, if you have, if you're using a Casio calculator, and I highly recommend either again the FX, was it 83 or 85 model, and I think that's the only ones you can actually use. There's a specific uh, setup you can do. In your calculator, if you press the most setup button and press number three, which is the table, and then enter the function you see. And by the way, to enter the function, you need to use um, you go press the the alpha key. So in your calculator, I think it's shift alpha. There's like a red button, and you got this kind of X Y Z. Use the actual letter, so x cubed minus 2x squared, and so on. If you're not sure how to do that, please let me know, and I'll try and uh, create a video on that. But anyways, if you do this, and then you enter the following commands, so, for instance, if they tell you how to start, because you start with x equals minus 2, you, you write x equals start with minus 2, and because the x values ends at 3, you press end 3. Now, you're going to get next option, which is step. And what this means is that is the difference between every single x intervals. So for instance, if you look at some points, we can see that x values are going down in 1, and it's going down in 0 0.5s, or going up in 0 0.5s. So what you want to do here is just write the, the, the smallest step to count is doing. I put 0 0.5, so that way it goes into 0.5s or everything between. So when you press that, you're going to get a list of x values and a y values, or the function values. And done, you should get every single answer for y. Now this 
what I recommend is the fastest way of doing this. You'll get the whole table solutions done quickly. Otherwise, you can manually input the values inside the equation. For instance, for minus 2, you would write y equals, um, in your calculator, minus 2 bracket cubed, minus 2, and instead of x, you put minus 2 squared, instead of x, you put minus 2, oops, minus 2 again, and so on. But this is such a long method, and let's be honest, it's just this, this method here is just so much nicer, especially if you've got so many values. But anyway, when you do this, let's move on. So it says here now on the grid, draw the graph of what you just did between for the values of x from minus 2 to 3. In other words, plot in the coordinates here. Yeah? So we've got minus 2, 6. So let's check it out. Minus 2, minus 6. Um, minus 1, 4. Minus 1, 4. And uh, minus 0 0.5, which is over here to... 4.875 so 4.875 is is around here no that's five actually no, that, no that's fine so five is here so it's about here so you have to just carefully put these values in yeah And that's really it. So now it's all been joined. Not the best curve, but hopefully it looks a bit like this. Um, guys, just correct me if I did anything wrong and just let me know. Otherwise, let's move on to C. So this is the, the one that everyone seems to get problems with. So by drawing a suitable straight line on the grid, find estimates for the solutions of this equation. Okay, now the problem with this equation is that if you look back at the original equation, they do not look the same. So let's go ahead and just firstly copy this equation down there, yeah? So let's write this down. So the original equation looked like this. It was x cubed minus 2x squared um, minus 3x plus 4. And now the new equation, and I'm just going to put 0 on the left side. 0 equals x cubed minus 2x squared minus x plus 1. Now what this means here is that because, you know, they've actually indirectly modified the original equation to do some kind of substitution. All you really need to do really is just try and make your original your new equation look like the original equation. Let's see what happened. So let's have a look. So it went from 4 to 1, right? So to go from 1 to 4, we need to firstly add um, add 3 to this equation from this part. And to go from minus x to minus 3x, he went down by minus 2x. So this essentially means that now we have the same equation. So we're going to have minus 2x plus 3 equals x cubed minus 2x squared minus 3x plus 4 so we've kind of um we've kind of done it so this is the this is the suitable straight line that they're talking about y which equals that now minus 2x plus 3 so yeah that's really all we have to do we just need to see what went wrong and do on both sides and we get the exact equation they're missing and i think that's it so but now we have to actually draw this on the grid and to me, the easy, easiest way to draw this is to literally just, literally just put out some coordinates and you're done. So for instance, I would say, okay, make a little table. Ask yourself, what happens when x is 0? So when x is 0, we're going to have y equals 0. Remember, minus 2 times 0 is 0, plus 3, which gives us 3. And another one. Let's say, what happens when x is um, 1? When x is 1, we're going to have minus 2 times 1, which is minus 2, plus 3. So minus 2 at 3 is 1. So these are our pairs of corners. 0, 3, and 1, 1. Now plot this into the curve. 0, 3, and 1, 1. So guys, I've taken you over to PowerPoint, yeah? Because it's the only way I can draw proper straight lines. So anyway, what I did here, I just plotted the points you found, which was 0, 3 over here, and 1, 1. So here's 1, 1. Then I just drew, then I just drew a straight line connecting them. Oops. Hitting every single point. Now... To find the solutions, it's basically the points intersection. And they only want the x coordinates, not the y. They don't really tell you about y. But for but probably for the purpose of it, I guess we'll find both of them, yeah? So let's have a look. So the first solution occurs somewhere over here, yeah? So that's about, I don't know, somewhere here, which is, that's 1, and this is 0 0.5. And this is 0 0.3. So the, you can just say the x solution is, I don't know, 0 0.3 or 4. So let's say 0 0.3 slash 0 0.4. Okay, we're just going to stick to the x coordinates, yeah? The y's will be similar. It'll be over here. 
So for the next solution, you'll see that the intersect around here. And by the way, guys, this is just like, um, this is, of course, not a very neat uh, cubic graph. So in, your, in, your, in the final solutions or the final mark scheme, they're going to give more exact results. So stick to that solution, yeah? And of course, all our graphs might look quite different. But anyway, let's keep going. So another one would be around here. So let's just say this is about 2.2. And then the last one would be around here. And that's about... Do, 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 do. What's that? So you got minus 0 0.5, 0 0.6, 0 0.7. So x equals minus 0 0.7. So I say these are the answers you need. Okay, number 15. So E and F have both been rounded to two decimal places. So we've got 8.31 and 0 0.65. And when something's been rounded to two decimal places, it means it was originally three decimal places or more. So for E and F, we should put it back to three. So we say that E, and we should always write like this, typically, if it was 8.31, to get down to uh, two decimal places, it could have been 8.315. So it's always plus minus the on the third decimal place, you add, add or minus five, yeah? So it'd be 15 there, or it'd be 05. So 305. And same thing for F. If it was 65, then it's probably 655. So 6.55 or 645. So just plus or minus the 5 on the third decimal point. Okay, now let's have a look. So work out the lower bound for the value of E minus F. Now, one thing is definitely not. It's definitely not the lower bound of E minus the lower bound of F. Reason why is that this is identical to the difference of the upper bound of E minus upper bound of F. And even the regular E minus F. All of these have the same difference because you're measuring the same difference. Because look, if you look at the difference between these two values, it's the same as these two values. Which is also the same as these two values. So none of this is, would be correct. The lower bound re really means that we need to find the, the smallest or the tightest difference. So the tightest gap would be the smallest possible value of the bigger value minus the biggest possible value of the smaller value. So you're kind of trying to, it's called, it's called maxi minning or mini maxing. So we're basically just doing 8.305, so the, the lower bound of E minus the upper bound of F. And when you do that, we should get, and I'm just going to check it out now, guys. Oh, man, I'm not right or wrong. 0 0.305 minus 0.655, and you get 7.65. That's it. Done.